Jane Eyre. You're being punished for being put in here. And here you're going to stay till Mrs. Reed cares to let you go. I'm frightened of this room. It's where my uncle died. Bessie, Jane please. Jane Eyre, if you don't keep quiet, something nasty will come down the chimney and fetch you away. You mustn't distress yourself, my dear Mrs. Reed. No one could have done more for the child. She has been treated like one of my own children. I have lavished affection on her. Has she no other relatives? I don't know of anybody. I promised my husband, <laughs> before he died, <laughs> that I would take care of her. She was his niece. Mr. Brocklehurst, you don't think that I'm doing wrong in sending her to your school, do you? On the contrary. The discipline of a charity institution is just what this girl would appear to need. Of course, I only wish to do what is best for Jane. I feel it is so bad for her to be uh, <laughs> running wild round here. I assure you, my dear madam, you need have no fear that Lowood viciousness is immediately crushed and bad temper inexorably dealt with. She is certainly vicious, Mr. Buckle. She won't be at Lowood, madam. There, I'm proud to say, we succeed in mortifying all the sins of the flesh. Only yesterday, my daughter Augusta said... Uh, ah, Jay, come in. Come here, child. Your name is Jane Eyre? Yes. Are you a good girl, Jane? Yes, sir. A liar, too. Do you know, Jane Eyre, where the wicked go after death? They go to hell, sir. Do you want to go to hell, Jane? No, sir. Then what must you do to avoid it? I must keep healthy and not die. How right you were, madam. This child needs the strictest possible attention. However, she shall be watched. I will speak to Miss Temple. Don't think for a moment, child, you are going to escape the consequences of your wickedness and ingratitude. It will be known, Jane Eyre, at the school. I myself will come and point the finger of scorn at you. You will be shunned until your rebellious spirit has been humbled and you are fit to associate with the pupils of Lowood School. Good day to you, madam. You, I will see at the school. Now you see, Jane. How wicked children are punished. I'm not wicked. It's you. You make people think you're good, but you're not. You're bad and hard-hearted. Oh, how 
death. It's the truth. I'll never forget how you locked me in that awful room. I'm glad I'm going. I'd rather go anywhere than stay with you. I hate no, you. Now, now, Jane. You don't really mean those things you're saying. It's just because you're upset. Now, dear, wouldn't you like to go and lie down for a little, my dear? I'm not you your dear. I don't want to lie down. I want to go away from here as soon as ever I can. I hope I never see you again, Jane L. <laughs> How is your cough today, Helen? A little better, thank you, Miss Temple. Why are you wearing this? I was late getting up. I see. Are you all finished? received, may the Lord make us truly thankful. Amen. You may dismiss. <coughs> hurry, girls, hurry. Don't do them. Burn the dare. Late. Last, as usual. Come along. and air. A black mark for talking. Get to your class at once. <coughs> oh, Mr. Brocklehurst. I have been waiting ten minutes, Miss Temple. I'm sorry, I didn't know you were here. I have called to tell you that my wife and daughters have expressed a wish to visit the school to examine my improvements. It won't inconvenience you if I bring them with me in the morning? Not at all. Thank you. How have you found the child Jane Eyre? Self-willed and obstinate, no doubt. I found Jane eager and willing to learn, not troublesome in any way. Indeed. But this report shows three black marks against her in one week. That is Miss Miller's report. I can only speak of Jane as I find her myself. You surprise me, Miss Temple. When I first saw the child, I knew her to be vicious, 
ungrateful and a liar. However, no doubt we all have our favourites. Jane was unloved and unhappy. She was rebellious, ma'am, and for her own good was sent to Lowood that her spirit might be humbled and she taught true meekness. I will take particular note of her tomorrow, and if I see no improvement, measures will be taken to break her. Now then, you may think I should mention this to you privately, Miss Temple, but since it closely concerns the girls themselves, I wish them to hear it. I refer to the recent lavish expenditure on food in this establishment. Lavish, Mr. Brocklehurst? Lavish, I repeat, Miss Temple. The food ordered by myself and the governors is amply sufficient for the needs of these girls. Yet in spite of this, what do I find on no less than two occasions? A lunch of bread and cheese has been served out during the past fortnight. How is this? On whose authority? I must take full responsibility for it, Mr. Brocklehurst. The breakfast served out to these girls were quite uneatable. In the cold weather, I couldn't allow them to go hungry for five hours. I presume you are bringing these girls up on Christian principles, Miss Temple? I hope so, sir. So do I. Yet it would appear that by this incessant gratification of their appetites, they are being taught habits of luxury and indulgence, and Mrs. Brocklehurst agrees with me. The opportunity should be taken not to replace the food and thus pamper the body, but by a short discourse, show how their spiritual welfare can be increased by the privation. Oh, Miss Temple, when you put bread and cheese into the mouths of these children, you may indeed feed their vile bodies, but you little think how you starve their immortal souls. I shall remember in future. I trust you will. Miss Temple, what is this? What, sir? This girl here with the hair, red hair, curled all over. It's Julia Seven, sir. And well, why should Julia Seven, against every rule and precept of this school, wear her hair in a mass of curls? Julia's hair curls naturally, sir. We are not here to conform to nature, Miss Temple. This girl's hair must be cut off. And if I see any others with too much six to... Look here. And here, and here again, and this child's here. <coughs> Stop that noise. <coughs> Control yourself, you hear, Miss Temple, punish this girl. Send her to work in the laundry, that will soon cure her. No, no, you can't do that. <coughs> it's dreadfully ill. Be silent, child. I won't. She's my friend. I won't let you. You have flouted my authority before, Jane Eyre, but this time you will be punished to the extent of my power. Stand out here. Miss Miller. Stool. <coughs> Get up. Now, Jane Eyre, I give you one more opportunity. Do you repent, wretched child, of what you said? I won't take back a word. You're wicked. Miss Temple, Cain. Must I ask you again, Miss Temple? <coughs> Get down from there. Hold out your hand. Both of them. Stop! Please stop! It was my fault. She did. Stand aside. Is she? Very ill. How did you expect her to be? Well, Doctor, you must realize uh, with a school of 80, 80 girls, I, I can't possibly give them all individual attention. Is it possible to ignore a girl that must have been coughing her heart out for weeks? 
Because you chose to disregard the obvious symptoms, a girl's life has been sacrificed. Her, her life? She may have a few weeks. How many, I can't say. She shall have every care and attention, Doctor. She has a friend, Jane Eyre. She has asked for her. I think she should be sent for. Good day to you, Mr. Brocklehurst. questions. I want to sleep now. I feel so happy with you beside me. I'll stay with you. No one will take me away. Jane, don't be too unhappy. One day, you'll leave this awful place. I know you will. Yes. One day I will. Good night, Jane. G good night, Helen. Jane Eyre? Yes, Miss Miller. Mr. Brocklehurst wishes to see you in this temple study immediately. Yes, Miss Miller. Jane Eyre has been here eight years, I believe, Miss Temple. Yes, Mr. Brocklehurst, eight oh. years. In view of this and of your excellent report on her, not entirely borne out by my own observations, I may say, it has been decided uh, that she shall be allowed to join the staff at Lowood School 
At a salary of eight pounds per annum. Join the staff. But I don't think she would wish to, Mr. Brocklehurst. Jane longs, above all, for a chance to get out into the world. The matter is already settled, Miss Temple. She will spend the rest of her life in the service of Lowood Institution. I think I should tell you, Mr. Brocklehurst, Jane has been advertising for a situation. Advertising? For a situation outside the school, you mean? Yes. And you permitted such a thing? She did it with my complete approval, Mr. Brocklehurst. How dare you go behind my back like this? You had no authority. That girl would never have done this without your connivance. Come in. Ah, come in, Jane. Uh, come in. I have news for you. Uh, very good news. I have been appointed by my fellow governors to tell you, uh, not asking any thanks, but merely doing our duty to those in need, that you will be allowed to... Uh, Join the staff at Lowood School. I won't. You won't? I can't live here all my life. Selfish and ungrateful girl. I have a good mind to turn you out of Lowood School now without a penny. Then why don't you? What? I said, why don't you, Mr. Brocklehurst? Because, Jane Eyre, ungrateful as you are, I am still mindful of my neighbor. After all, if I turned you out, where would you go? To Thornfield Hall, Mr. Brocklehurst. Miss Temple. My advertisement's been answered. I'm wanted as a governess to a little girl of 30 pounds a year. Jane. 30 pounds a year? It's unheard of. Read for yourself. No. No, I don't let it go out of my hand. I'm to go at once, Mr. Brocklehurst. So you needn't grudge me another mouthful of food or drink in this place. I'm free of it. Free of you. How dare you? How dare you? Miss Temple, you've not heard the last of this, not by any means. Our charity flung back at us. Our good intentions flouted. Mr. Brocklehurst, it will mean a saving of eight pounds a year. Jane. Jane, I'm so glad for you. May I see the letter? Yes, yes, of course you may. It's from Mrs. Fairfax. She writes so kindly. Miss Temple, I'm to be treated as one of the family. Oh. Thornfield Hall. It sounds a big house. Yes, yes, I think it must be. I can't wait to be gone. Go and get your things packed. Yes. There's a lot to be done. Yes, yes, of course. Miss Temple. Yes? I'm not ungrateful. Not to you, at any rate. No, I know you're not. Thank you for being kind when I was frightened. Thank you for being a friend when I was lonely, and above all, thank you for teaching me so much. I shall think of you often. No, Jane, don't. Don't look back. You've gained your freedom. Now you must look forward all the time. Look forward, Jane. A new life. 